Hello everyone, welcome back to another geologic video on learning geology, and today we're going to be looking at igneous extrusive rock, otherwise known as volcanic rocks. I'll also be talking about volcanoes as well. Um, that might be for another video explaining the different types of volcanoes. I might include a little bit in this video, or I might just include it all together in this video. But um, I think that'll be a separate video. If so, when it's done, you should see it pop up right up here or there. I'm not sure which corner, but anyways, let's get into this. Before we go any further, this video is part of a series that I've started where I teach you geology. I've already have uh, a couple videos already posted on the three different rock types and a little bit on igneous intrusive rocks. So if you haven't seen those, make sure to go check those out first if you want to learn some geology. So a volcanic rock pretty much explains itself. It's a rock that erupted from a volcano. That's why it's extrusive, because it extruded out of the ground. So if you remember from the previous video, I talked about the different mineral compositions that make up these igneous rocks. You have two, two different types of silicate minerals. You have your mafic silicates and you have your felsic silicates. Mafic minerals tend to be darker color and your felsic minerals tend to be a lighter color. Now, I don't think I've mentioned this in past videos, but these two different types of silicate minerals also have different densities. So a mafic silicate mineral or mafic minerals will have a higher density than felsic minerals. And that's due to the fact that mafic minerals are high in magnesium and iron, which is naturally more dense. So your mafic minerals, if you remember, are things like hornblende, amphibole, and biotite. Your felsic minerals are things like quartz and feldspars. Now with igneous intrusive rocks, it's easy to see the individual minerals, which makes it easy to identify if it's a granitic, andesitic, or um, mafic composition, because the minerals are quite large because it cooled slowly. Now with volcanic rocks, you don't really have that because the minerals cooled quickly because the lava was exposed to air temperature, which made it, um, when it did cool, it made the rock uh, fine-grained. With volcanic rocks, extrusive rocks, they have an anthronitic texture, and intrusive rocks have a phanerytic. Anthronitic meaning it's just uh, fine-grained, because again, the minerals did not have time to cool slowly, they cooled quickly. So when you're identifying a volcanic rock, uh, you usually want to look at the color. That's one of the first things. With minerals, it's a little different because minerals can have very different many colors, but rocks, when it comes to like a volcanic rock, they tend to stay the same color typically. So when it comes to identifying a volcanic rock, you want to look at the color as well as the texture and the general shape of the rock to see what's going on. As you can see, I am currently on a volcano. There's the cone right up there, and there goes a bus taking some people up to the top. As you can see, the rock is very dark colored. Very black, dark brown. So if you remember about the felsic and mafic minerals, mafic minerals tend to be more of a darker color. If you have a lava that's high in mafic minerals, when it cools, you expect that rock to be a, a dark color. So, if you look at the rock here, you can see it's very dark colored, uh, minus the yellows and reds in here because this is a mafic rock and sometimes they'll oxidize because of the high iron concentrations so they won't always be a black color um, usually with age and weathering they start to turn more of a yellow or even a deep red color depending on how oxidized they are but this lava flow here is pretty pretty new it's about i think it's about 7,000 to 14,000 years old which is in geologic terms pretty young so now that we've looked at the color, next thing you want to do is look at the texture of this rock. If you look closely, you can see all the pores in this rock. And you can see how it's almost got that molten texture. Again, this is pretty fresh, so not all, not all of the same kind of rock is going to look like this, because if it's several million years old, it's not going to have this fresh look to it. Anyways, all these pore pockets, this is where gas was escaping out of the molten lava, out of the flow which means there was a lot of gas coming out of the lava. Has this big kind of, uh, this stuff almost reminds me of like a slag, like a molten slag from metal. Has kind of that glassy sound. So if you haven't figured it out, the rock all around me is basalt, which is a mafic rock. See there's some reds on there from oxidation, which is also typical with basalt. So this is all basalt lava here, and basalt is pretty common. The oceanic crust, for example, is made of basalt. Or I should just say the oceanic crust has a basaltic composition. The continental crust has more of a granitic composition. 
basalt is typically darker. It's going to have more of that uh, vescular texture where all those gases were escaping, which makes it pretty holy looking, porous. New location. Notice the rocks are very dark in color. We also have some lighter colored rocks. So looking at this rock, as you can see, it's dark in color. Now, unlike basalt, basalt is dark in color because of the mafic minerals that are in it. Now, looking at this rock, you can see it's also dark, but it's darker for a different reason. And if you look at it, the texture of it, you can see how shiny and glassy it is. And I'm sure most of you can identify what this is. This is, of course, uh, obsidian. Obsidian is a type of volcanic glass, and that's the texture of it. It's a glass texture. And that's, that's what it is. Obsidian is a glass, and glass has a high silica content. Since uh, obsidian is high in silica, that would put it into the granitic composition. Uh, and since this is an extrusive volcanic rock, lava basically, this would be a rhyolitic composition. Obsidian contains over 70% silica. Now obsidian cools so quickly it doesn't allow any minerals to form crystals at all. Um, so instead you get this glassy texture because it has no time to form into a more of a rocky texture. Now you'll also notice these rocks. These are very light in color and they're also very light for the size, density wise. Looking at it closely, you can see it has kind of a frothy texture. So if you look at this big chunk here, I can easily move that around. It's very light and you can see that frothy texture if you look really closely. It has those air pockets and you can see how it just seems to be wiry and frothy. Since it's light in color, you can automatically assume that it has more felsic silicate minerals. And since this is right next to the obsidian, you can automatically conclude that this is also felsic. And this is in fact pumice. And pumice is pretty easy to tell if it's pumice because it'll float in water. So pumice and obsidian are both high in silica content, making them a granitic composition. And since they're extrusive volcanic rocks, they would be more of a rhyolitic composition. Obsidian, pumice. So here's a piece of pumice. So pumice will float and scoria will sink. So an easy way to tell if it's pumice or scoria is to do a float test, but it's pretty easy to identify pumice because it's light and colored, which means it's felsic and has that frothy appearance. And scoria is darker, more mafic, and heavier, more dense. All right, so let's look at a different type of rock here. All right, so if you look here, you can see it's a darker rock. But if you also look closely, you can see the individual uh, white minerals in here. So sometimes within a volcanic rock, you sometimes can see individual minerals, but usually it's gonna be intermixed with a finer grained matrix, as you can see here. So the black is the finer grained matrix, and then the white minerals are, of course, the little phenocris uh, that are in the lava. So looking real closely, um, if you identify the minerals, the white minerals are feldspars. And if you look really closely, and I don't think you're gonna see this on the camera, you can see there's some sparkles and shine, shiny minerals within this lava rock. Those minerals are quartz. Now, if you remember, basalt is a darker rock like this. However, basalt is not going to contain quartz. So if there's quartz in your igneous lava rock, that automatically cancels out basalt. So if you have quartz present, it is no longer basalt. Since it's darker, and you can see the feldspar minerals in here, this rock here would likely identify as an andesite. So this rock would have an andesitic composition. Also, if you find a igneous lava rock that has uh, more felsic minerals, like more quartz and more feldspars in it, um, it could also be something called a dacite similar to andesite, but dacite has more felsic minerals because sometimes you have compositions that are in between the two. Like if you have a composition that's between 
a granitic and an andesite. With the intrusive, it'd be a granodiorite. And with the extrusive lava, it'd be a dacite. Here's a look at more of the volcanic rock here on the volcano. So andesite and dacite is more typical with composite and stratovolcanoes like Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. See the individual minerals in there? You can see the quartz in there, so that automatically rules out the salt. So this is an andesite, or a dacite. So just by looking at the rock, you can identify um, roughly if it's an andesite or dacite. But if you really want to get the true composition, you should compare it with a mineral identification chart. Now another rock you might find specifically near volcanic areas is a rock like this. As you can see, it's got smaller rocks that are included into it. So this, I believe, is a welded tough rock. So tough is basically like ash and pumice that erupts from the volcano and it gets mixed with larger stones. Usually you get welded tufts like this from uh, pyroclastic deposits, from pyroclastic flows, or anything that's ejected from the volcano. You see that? Got a big rock that's included within the bigger rock. So I would say, not 100% certain, but I would say this would be welded tuff um, from the volcano. Here's another example of what I think is welded tuff. You can see there's inclusions in this big boulder. So this is like existing, uh, existing lava rock that got trapped and basically sealed into like pumice and ash. And this is likely from uh, pyroclastic flows or pyroclastic deposit.